Um, the reason that we're focusing on cerebral palsy is because right now there's no accurate way to really diagnose it until a child's around two years of age, give or take. And so we're trying to um, lower that age and intervene earlier so that we can hit that critical development period. And basically we're looking at the movements, the general movements of infants that are present from birth to three months and trying to see if those are predictive of cerebral palsy. And the kind of background for that is there's this video um, assessing method that currently exists that um, doctors can look at these movements and just with their eyes say that movement is fidgety um, and that could be in indicative of cerebral palsy. And so we're trying to quantitate that. Um, that method has been shown to be 95% accurate, but the problem is there are only a select number of doctors trained in the world that can do that. So we're trying to get this to be a clinical tool that can be everywhere. And so um, this, this is a really pretty cheap method of doing it. And so um, my job was to make these little sensors. And if you know anything about electronics, you know this is a pretty simple design. And I'll tell you the reason why this is pretty simple and really small is because I actually got to shadow in the NICU last summer. It was my first time in the hospital, really. And those babies are so tiny, and I was so touched. And and we had this idea in our engineering lab on the other side of the world, you know, we thought, oh, we're going to make this awesome wireless Bluetooth device and it'll have this coin cell battery and, you know, it's going to be the size of a silver dollar and be, you know, a good couple of kilograms and that's not okay when you're dealing with premature babies. And so I went back and said, we got to go back to the drawing board. We can't make a mistake. we got to be tiny. And even if that means having wires on it, that's better than having that weight on the infant's arm. Because if you can, I mean, if you imagine you have something on your arm and you're trying to lift it up, you're going to move it a little bit different than the other arm. And so we went back. This is, this is actually the third round of um, the sensors. And so they, it was about four times as big last year when I first started and then we got smaller and smaller. Um, this is really simple. It only has an uh, accelerometer, this little chip in the accelerometer which just measures acceleration. You get three axes of movement. Um, and we have a little capacitor on it that just keeps stores some charge for us. And we have it connected to this um, medical grade silicone wire. And so we can put these on the baby. Um, and we put them on each of the limbs. That one's not going to stay on there for us, but I didn't want to glue it on there just yet. Then these send information to this guy, which is called a data acquisition device. And I call this the talker. It basically talks to the computer. And so it takes this data and it spits out stuff to the computer. The computer, that's how we can analyze everything. And so um, I guess, oh, there's also a video camera. And so one big thing is we want to be able to pair the movements right beside the video. And one big issue is getting those perfectly time stamped. That doesn't sound like a big deal because you would imagine that you could just kind of have two people manning this and one with the video camera and one pressing the button on this program and say, go. Even milliseconds can make a big difference. And so that was one big thing. Um, so we integrated the um, video into the software. And I guess I can go ahead and show you that and someone can move his arm around if you guys want to see how those movements look. <laughs> this is the front panel of our program. And each of these graphs represents uh, one of the limbs. So right now I just have two of them hooked up. And this is, of course, the video feed. This will be mounted above the crib so that we can get a full body display. But just for today, we just put it like this. And then they would hit this one button, run. It would prompt them for where to save it. One place is the video file. You just click on the file that you want to save it as. Other place is the movement file. And then you can see that we have live data. And so if you want to move this guy, you can see this is the top one. And it goes in three axes of movement. And if you move it quickly, it gives you a sharper peak. And so the next step is, in theory, we want to make a clinical tool that we can slot these tiny little watches on them and a physician would hit a button for 30 seconds, save that, save that data somewhere for later use as kind of a medical history. And we have an algorithm built in with this that says, oh, they're good to go, green light, or there could be an issue, slow down. Right, exactly, exactly. We want some kind of quantitative way to, to help physicians out. So this